Hi guys, this is Pika10, and welcome to your 14th Roblox Will of Scripting tutorial. Now, you may have noticed one of or more of three things. Firstly, the screen looks different. Bigger would be the correct word. Secondly, my microphone has changed for the worse, probably. I should be able to cut out a bit of the background noise, but not a bit of the just distortion of my voice. This is because with the new computer, I've had to change the microphone because it didn't come with a built in one and I had to use a crappy webcam one and thirdly I'm back to using a much better screen recording software I'm using Camtasia Studio something again because I can re-download the trial I'm not buying it though I've got it. I've got this good one for 30 days I should be able to good, do a good few scripting controls in that time so before we start with the scripting showcase last last scripting tutorial I posted, uh, oh, I posted, I spoke of a contest that you could have entered, and I was going to announce the winners today, the winner even, except there aren't any. I said the person who got it right would get the Robux, but no one actually did it right. Now, just go back to the end of the last video, rewatch it, see if you can. See if you know what to do, and I'll give you hints, seeing as no one's going to be able to get it. You need to use for loops. If you can use the for loops to do what I said last time, and then you will, if you use them correctly, then you will be able to gain the prize money, which is now 700 Robux. Right. The first item in the scripting tutorial, the scripting tutorial, the scripting showcase even, is this the only item even, I received a lot more but I can't show them today is by Programmer101 let's move out of the way of the spawn first <clears throat> now hopefully this won't actually take too long to load this time because on the other computer it took around 5 minutes each time and look it's a lot quicker than 5 minutes I didn't even have to cut that out this time, right there's gold let's go and get some gold Warning! Shield defences are ah, blown up. Ow! Now, that is pretty cool. You should all technically have been able to make that by now, but it'll be a very good feat if you'd have managed to do that already. So, we can have a look at the scripts in that. How you may be wondering how on earth could you have done that by now after all this time? We'll zoom in on it from here. We'll go and look at the scripts here. So, this is a script you didn't actually need to use for Find First Child here. I have covered it very briefly, but you didn't actually need to use it. This loop goes over, sets the shield C frame, the shield which you saw when I walked into it, to the gold's position constantly as it's not anchored. I'm not sure why it's not anchored, you could have just anchored it, but hey. This one, when it, this is what we learned in the 30th tutorial, the, uh, the events. If As soon as anyone touches this, the transparency of the shield, which is usually invisible, so it's the semi-transparent 0.4, and then back to invisible again. And the other script says it creates a hint, which is which you'll be able to learn from the instancing bit I covered earlier. Sets the parent, says the message, creates an explosion, also using the instance bit, and then it will set it all off with the event which on tutorial 13. Now that is a pretty cool script and that's this guy programmer 101 has been has must have been paying attention and picked up on everything really really quickly so if you can't do that yet you're just re-watching all the, or practicing. You don't need to re-watch the videos because you probably know them you just need to practice making models. So submit cool models to the scripting showcase. Let them be seen by everyone and see how good you are at scripting. Right, in today's tutorial, we'll be covering tables. Now, you may have heard me mention tables before as very boring, very um, things you won't be interested in, that, but they're still useful. And to, But hopefully you won't find them as boring now because you've already explored some parts of scripting. You already know how things work. You probably want to do more. You can't do a whole lot more than the basic stuff without tables. You definitely can't make good places without tables, which I know is probably all you want to do at the moment. Remember, these tables are an absolutely vital part of our mini game script which will be um, ending these tutorials on well not ending I will go into some parts later on probably but anyway you may have noticed I have created a new place I'm not using our usual nuke place anymore um, I've named it tables just forgot you could you could use your own place or just decide to make a new one and first of all we're going to insert the script whoops 
not a model. Insert object script. Now, before we start, what is a table? A table is basically a way of storing and structuring data. We could just store data just by putting a equals 1, that's storing data, and the variable a. We could store more data, b equals 2. We could store more data, c, c equals... We could store different types of data. We could sort d equals a vector 3, for example. Whoops, vector 3. 1.2. We could store loads of different kinds of data. We can do all of this stuff. All this stuff you can do on the table, but the most the key part is you, you can structure it, and it's dynamic. And by that I mean you, you can remove stuff, you can you can change stuff, you can add stuff in, in different locations. All of this stuff is really useful, and you can all oh, you can also loop through the data, which is also a really really important part in tables. Now you, you don't probably realise how important and what you can actually use tables for. Um, at the end of this script, at the end of this tutorial, I will show you some of some scripts that use tables in them. But in this tutorial, I'll be I won't be teaching any practical uses. I'll be going into the technical parts of table tables, which you probably find very boring, but you need to know. In the next tutorial, I'll be going to loops and how you work them with tables. But and then in a tutorial after, we'll be actually doing something that makes tables be useful. So to start, how do you create a table? You create a table. Just by putting all variable names, you can call it anything. I'm just going to call it pig, pigs rule equals. And then to start a table, you have to put the curly brackets. To finish a table, you have to use closed curly brackets. And in between, you can put all of the data inside. You don't, don't, don't have to be on the same line. You can change the lines. You can put this. You can enter the first one here. It doesn't matter. But for now, it's only a small table. We don't do this stuff. So, to so enter an, an element in the table, which is what you call by when you enter a piece of data into the table, you simply type what it is. That's adding an element to the table. We, but the element can be absolutely anything, just like a variable can, can be anything. So it could be nil, it could be true, false, it could be any kind of numbers, it could be any kind of string or pig. It could be, say, it could be a part. So if there was a part in workspace, I could do workspace dot part. It could be a player. It could be game dot players dot player. It could be uh, a break color. It could be absolutely any sort of data you can think of. Now, so add. An, so I'm just going to stick with five. To add, to add in a new piece of data, put a comma, and then you put the next one in. You may have recognised the sort of structure when you're using other scripts. I'll go into what other scripts you use at the end of this tutorial, but I'll just show you how you can use them. You put a comma again, and you can add in. They, not all, not everything in the table has to be the same kind of data. In fact, it's usually not. You can then use hi. You can then use true. You can then use game dot workspace dot message because for some reason there's a message in workspace. I think I have a feeling it gets removed when it starts. So let's insert a part so we actually let's not bother. Let's just let's just leave that in. I'll put it as a vector three dot new zero five four. That's a three, but that's fine too. In brackets. So this is a table. Now, as I've already said, I'm only going to be doing really into technical parts, which you're probably going to find incredibly boring, but you need to know all this stuff, and then you, so you can do the next tutorial, and you need to know the stuff in the next tutorial, so you can do the tutorial after, which is actually quite cool. First of all, to insert something into a table, you need to type table, which is the start for all the table functions, like instance functions, you type instance.new, and for some other functions, you type something, dot something. In this, we type table, dot, new. Table.new, table.insert, sorry, table.insert, table do nothing. And it's the function, so we use two brackets again. And the first thing we use is the table we're going to insert something into. The second thing we're going to use is the table. It, no, it's, sorry, it's the thing we're going to insert. So let's just, this element, or at least a technical term, this element was inserted. So, 
this piece of code will simply insert the something at the end of the table, so it will be effectively putting a comma and then putting something else and what's here. So this element was inserted, so um, this is the value that's inserted into the element, I'm not sure this element or whatever. This would use even better. Oops. This value was inserted. So that will basically insert something over there. Now to remove something from a table, you type table as usual dot remove in the table, but this time we don't put what the thing we want to remove is, we put its index, and its index means um, what it's been indexed as, which probably doesn't make any sense to you, and it's completely stupid to understand that at all, but as we haven't specifically indexed anything, and I'll go into that later, it is basically what position is stable, so this is index 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, so for now, let's go. Now we can remove. If you wanted to remove high, we go one, two, three, three. Now, as you might expect, but technically, people have had experience with other languages won't ne necessarily expect, is that this doesn't just set it to nil. It will complete. It will set it to nil, but then shift everything else in the table downwards. So it'll, instead of being five, two, nil, true, vector three, that new, it will be five, two high won't be there, it'll be true, then vector 3 dot new, and then this one just won't exist. Won't it be exist? Won't exist. Now, to get the length of a table, you could do table.len, which is actually absolutely pointless, because instead, you can use... Put, simply put this hash sign in front of the table name. So if you wanted just round and row table length equals... Now, the main thing I haven't shown you yet is how to access elements from the table. Now, this is a very important part, obviously, we can't actually use any of this stuff. So before, I'm going to say, well, first of all, I'm going to show you how to do it. Type in the table name, square bracket, the index of the element you want to access, so it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we'll go to 5, this will be pick five. That will be the vector three. So for now we're gonna print I'm just gonna we're gonna print this. Print pig five. Go back to tables, press the run button. Zero five three. That's the fifth item in the table that's gonna print. Whoops, double click on this. So now if we printed pig Five afterwards. What's going to happen now? It's going to have the same ve value, vector three, because pig five won't be the thing that's added onto the end. It will just be this one. So remember, it's not replaced. This does not get replaced by table insert. It's just something added on the end. We print pig five again after the table's been removed. Print pig table's been removed after the third item from the table has been removed, which is says there by table only three. It says this value was uncertain. Now you notice it's not the vector three. This is because we started with one, two, three, four, five. So we printed pig five and it print the vector three. Then we insert something after 5, which is number 6, which we print 5 again, so we'll print this again. But then it removes 3, so instead of being this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, it will be 5, 2, true, vector 3, and then this value was inserted, which is this thing which you just inserted before. So then we could also print the table length for different points and show different table lengths, but we're not going to do that because it's boring. The last thing I want to show you for now is a how to print everything in the table at once, how to access everything in the table at once. So, print, un, well first of all the function is unpack name, unpack name, un, well, well yeah, unpack the name of the table or what you've assigned the variable to's name. So the variable is pig, unpack pig, that's all it is won't actually unpack it, it'll just return something 
the eternal unpack version of tables. So if you did this now, this is what it prints. Unpack every item in the table. Now, this is how you get the length of a table. I've already gone through that, but we're just gonna if we if we pr print table length now. Then it's just going to say five. There's five items in this table because we removed one to make it four, and then we inserted one to make it five again. All the other way around, we inserted one, then removed one. And is there anything else we need to explain about tables? I don't think so for this trial. No, there's not actually anything else we need to explain about tables. So I'm sorry this has been a short trial. It's been this has been sorry a, a quite boring technical aspect of tables. The next trial will be going to looping through tables. Also, I must remind you about the contest that's still going with a 700 Robux prize. If you can manage to finish, finish. if you can manage to do what I said at the end of the last video with for loop, and then I'll give you 700 Robux. So, that's all for just to try on. Make sure you don't get bored. Make sure you just need to learn that stuff. Try and memorise it so you'll be good and prepared for the next draw. The next draw should be coming quite quickly. Quickly? Yes, not quickly, quickly. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial.